All right, so eventually you have a Twitter account. You have something where you can start to build followers. I'm using one of these accounts of mine that already exists just for testing it. But what I want to do as soon as possible after going through this setup process, I want to set up a couple of more things, especially if you're new. I'm trying to get followers. This particular account has 93 followers. Again, it doesn't mean 93 sales. 1% 1 of 93 is less than 1, but we can round it up to 1. So maybe I can make one sale. Maybe, however, my content is so amazing that I'm closer to 25% CTR. Maybe 50%, maybe 75%. But still, I usually am not going to get out of 100 followers, 100 sales. Well, we're going to try to build followers as soon as possible. One thing that we need to talk about is, is your account fully set up to entice followers? When you first set up Twitter, you're going to have the generic egg icon. You haven't hatched yet on Twitter. And you're going to have a generic blue color. And notice also on this particular account, I've got other things set up on it, such as a biography, a graphic, all of that stuff. The way to do this, we want to set up your account completely first, because why would someone follow an account that doesn't look complete? Why would follow someone follow that account? That, that seems like a spam account to me, that someone created this to you know, sell uh, fake merchandise or something. So wherever you're at, at the top right corner, mine has my icon here, but you probably have an egg. That's the profile and settings. Click on that icon on the top right and click View Profile. On the top right corner where you've got an egg icon, click on that and view profile. So when we go to view profile here, you're going to see this and you're going to see that in my case it's been filled out. I've got graphics, I've got content, and yours is empty, basically. So one of the first things we want to do with any social network is complete the profile. So I'll be talking about several tips to get followers. <clears throat> So one tip is complete your profile. Yes. Um, the uh, the thing about Twitter is that it's very open, and uh, people spam bots can create apps that search for new follow uh, new accounts and follow. So you, it may or may not be legitimate. Uh, oftentimes, if you're brand new and you already have a follower, it's probably not a legitimate follower. I wouldn't worry about it too much, but. You've got at least one follower, you're on your way. <laughs> so complete your profile. So fill in biography, account icon, top graphic, so a spam account is pretty empty or pretty bare. Here what we want then to do is to set it up a little bit more so that we have actual content and enticing people. You should see then on the right side, Edit Profile. Click on Edit Profile. There's a spot to change the header graphic. There's a spot to change your icon, your profile photo. I don't have these icons with me at the moment. That's okay. I'm going to do it at home. So pretend this is a blank account like yours. But here is where I would put in some top graphic and put in my logo graphic. Notice the logo is a square and the top graphic is a rectangle. People then ask, what are the sizes of these graphics? Well, your profile graphic which is a square, should be about 600 pixels. The size of it, the dimensions is 600 wide, 600 tall. That graphic will then be resized to all the proper sizes. If someone is on their mobile device, it'll shrink down to fit. If someone is on the desktop, it'll grow, etc. The, 
the header graphic it's a rectangle that one is 1500 by 500 pixels if you don't know what pixels are or how to shape your graphics I can't tell you too much about that you need somehow to use some software to make this graphic. If you take a photo and upload it, most likely it's the wrong dimensions, it's the wrong size. You need some software to edit graphics. The uh, famous software, graphic editing software, is Photoshop. But an alternative for free is at pixlr.com. You can go to pixlr.com, P-I-X-L-R.com, pixlr.com, and you can use that for free to crop graphics, resize graphics, put text on them, put filters. Photoshop lets you do that, but it costs hundreds of dollars. Here's one alternative software. Question? Yeah, iPhoto should have some ability to do that as well. Yes? I think my friend uses something called Canva. Is that... I don't think I've heard it, but if they use it and they like it, then give it a shot. Picasa does it also. Picasa? Yeah. So there's several ways to do this, but you need a graphic. These dimensions are best. If it's larger or smaller than this, it'll probably work okay. But the problem is, notice that this is a very, a very wide rectangle. Oops, sorry, that should have been 1,500 by 500. Um, but it's a very wide rectangle, so if you've got a picture that's more of a square and you put it up on that header, it's going to crop it in an odd way and you're not going to get it to show properly. Same thing with, the, uh, with that profile graph. It's a square. If your business logo is a rectangle, it will get cropped. The edges will get cropped out. And just a few weeks ago when I was teaching this class and we were talking about Twitter, I could show a great example here. And I hope I don't, you know, make anyone mad, but let me show this example here. Let's see what they did. Okay, they changed it. A few weeks ago, it had the bolt cut off. They never resized the logo to fit into the square. And then now they changed it. But other companies do that as well, that... Uh, you put, you upload a, you upload a rectangle or a portrait picture and it cuts off. So that should be a square, proportional. All the networks basically have that, either a square, this is actually a rounded square, uh, other networks have a circle, but they're all in proportion. There's no network that has your logo area as a rectangle. If your rectangle is, if your logo is a rectangle, you have to use some software, like Photoshop or Pixlr, Picasa, etc., to shape it into a square. <clears throat> Here's something that I would say to get inspiration. Uh, you could go to different accounts. Try this, twitter.com slash sdce, or just see here for a moment. The username is your Twitter address, as I said. So, twitter.com slash Victor's Bakery would be my username. Twitter.com slash SDCE is this college. Our full name is SDCE.edu. That's what they chose to put. And the username with the at symbol is SDCE, not the .edu part. So I'm showing this example. See how they set up their header graphic. They took the opportunity to make a graphic of a collage. Now, they didn't quite follow the right dimensions because a few people's heads are cut off. But probably if it's on a mobile device, it, it, it looks pretty good because we have to view it on different devices. So on a mobile device, it's not cutting off. Another example, um, stick it. Uh, don't worry about it. Ask me during the break. <laughs> Another example is... Let's see if I go to UCSD, just to choose different uh, different sites, just to see what people are doing. 
Okay, UCSD is not UCSD. I went to twitter.com slash UCSD, but then they said, we've moved. We're at UC San Diego. So I expected UCSD, and it's not that. It's UC San Diego. Okay, here it is. Major rebranding about five years ago. Hmm. I wouldn't have given up that Twitter name, however. UCSD is a lot easier to type than UC San Diego. That's true. So they've got the photo, an off-kilter shot of a Geisel Library. So look at that. They use they didn't use the official logo, which is the library, but they used a photo of the library. I think it's a little too far. They could have gotten a little closer. And they've got an octopus attack as a graphic up there. <laughs> so different example up there. You're, you're not limited to what you put here, but look at examples of other, uh, of other um, Twitter accounts to get ideas. Um, let's see this one. If I look at CNN, they've got their logo. It's nice on the square. Look at what they did here. They made a graphic that tells you we're also on Instagram. We're also on Facebook. We're also on Twitter. We're also on Vine. These are not clickable. They're not actually going to take you there. If I click Facebook, nothing happens. But they designed the graphic to also advertise. We're on these other networks. Now, they might not have chosen the right dimensions because it's looking a little blurry. Some of this looks a little blurry. Yes? Vine. Vine. This is the network that they just shut down last month. They haven't updated. I liked it a lot. I, it was pretty fun. It was short videos, six second long videos. They shut it down. And then Snapchat and such. So just get ideas from um, different accounts. Uh, so our business, PMD Interactive. We've put the logo there. And then we've put the logo again, but then spelling it out because we've got a business name that doesn't uh, make sense on its own PMD Interactive. Victor's Bakery makes sense. They're a bakery, apparently. UCSD, CNN, those things make sense. But if I've got a business with an esoteric name, esoteric means no one knows what it means. No one knows what esoteric means. So uh, PMD Interactive I can't tell what they do, what they are, just from the name. So we've taken the spot here to put the logo and the graphic, Web and Social Media Marketing Solutions. Is it, is it important that the name represents what product is? No, because a few years ago someone asked me, uh, are you going to uh, invest in Nike? 40 years ago, 50 years ago, what's a Nike? What's a Nike? <laughs> so, after time, we know what that means. For us, no. The name doesn't have to quite matter. PMD Interactive, if we had called it PMD Web Services, okay, it's obvious and it works, but any name for these, for any company, doesn't matter. We know what McDonald's is, you know, 70 years later, but back in the day, what? Is it a farm? So, your name... <laughs> Your name doesn't quite matter, but take advantage, as we'll see in a moment, to fill in the details of what your business is so that people find out what you are and follow you. This is, we're spending time on this because this is an overlooked thing. If you've got a brand new account, you've got a blue field. You've got an egg. You want to fix that as soon as possible. I don't have my graphics here, but I'll do it as, at home as soon as I can. And how do you actually load them? So if you click on that field and it gives you things to choose? Yes. For you. Mm -hmm. There's a spot then right here on the left side. This is your full name. This is one of a couple of places where you can change your full name. You have like uh, 20 characters or so. You're not going to be able to write a huge soliloquy right there. You're going to have the name of your business. Anything you want to write there with spaces and characters and happy faces and emoji and all of that if you want. There's no limitation on the full name. The limitation is on the username. You edit that elsewhere. That's the one you want to cherish more because only one in the world can have it. This, if I want to right now, I can change this name to be CNN and they'll say, welcome CNN. But this one here cannot be changed to CNN. That one's been taken. And you edit that elsewhere in the photo? Mm -hmm. Then you've got a spot for a biography. This is about 160 characters. 
a little bit extra space besides a tweet where you can write about your business. So at a certain point, if you go too far, it'll tell you. Right there, I wrote too much. So here we've got social media web design finance. Keep up with the latest to be successful. If this business doesn't make sense on its own, vmcinc.net, it's not obvious what the business is. I definitely then took the time for this business to write what they're about in this biography. You should too. We will see that search is one of the most important aspects in a social network. So if people are searching for the name of your business, they can find you. If people are searching for topics of your business, they might find you. We'll get into search later, but think in terms there, sentences and keywords about what your business is that could help you get found. So tips to get followers. Complete your profile, fill in the biography, use it for phrases, keywords that help you get found. Use it for phrases and keywords to help you get found. All the networks have this, a spot for you to add some sort of about me or biographical information. Always take advantage of it. Always write something there. You can use the same text on all the networks if you want. That's fine. That keeps consistency. You could put something different on each network if you want. <coughs> There's also a spot for a location. Uh, cities and the states or countries and such. If it's relevant for you, you can put in a location. Victor's Bakery, I'm going to say perhaps, you know, we have a location on Main Street. I could put my address there, 123 Main Street. I could put an address there if I want. Or I can simply put a city. Or if I'm shipping throughout the U.S., I could put U.S., global, I could put whatever. This has some value, but not a whole lot. If you don't put in uh, a location, it's okay, but definitely your biography is more important. And then you've got a, a website. So if you've got a website, you would put it there. All of these social networks, as I said before, are in the service of making you sales, getting you phone calls, getting you hired, or whatever you're trying to do. Well, your website is also an important aspect of all of that. This company, for example, this is a social media company, uh, want to get hired to, do, to run social media. So I would put a website there where it's got my phone number, a contact form, prices, I don't know, whatever is relevant to show people to make the sale, to get hired. So I'll put in my web address there to get traffic. You may or may not see this link about Vine. Don't worry about it. They shut it down. Periscope. This is another network. We don't, we don't have a chance to, to talk about it in my classes. This is another up-and-coming network. Twitter owns Vine and owns Periscope. Vine with short six-second videos. I thought it was very popular, but they shut it down. Periscope is live video, meaning you can turn on your Periscope app and live talk to your followers, live show behind the scenes. Again, I'd like to teach a lesson on Periscope, but we don't, we don't have a day for it. I would look into it, that one seems that that's where Twitter is going to put more of their effort into, they probably won't shut it down. Quick reminder, if you haven't uh, muted your devices, please take a moment to mute your phones, please. But Periscope is perhaps another network to get into that may be valuable to reach an audience. It's a whole new ball of wax, but it's something that you might want to look into. Theme. It show up on your Twitter page. If it doesn't, you, you haven't set it up. Theme color, we have a way to do a little design. That's pretty straightforward. 
birthday, you can ignore that since you've got a business. You don't really put a birthday for a business, I suppose. For a person, you could, and the point of that is you get like some, I don't know, happy birthday message from Twitter. If you do make any changes here, then you can save. And one of the things you want to do early on is to fill in this biography to set up your profile. Any questions on that? Yes? The is a, uh, how is, a, is right now in the market it's very efficient sites like Facebook it goes alive and you have a lot of uh, hours. Do you recommend it to me to spend time with Periscope? I do. I like Periscope. I've used it for personal and for businesses and because it's new and interesting and fun it seems to do to do pretty well. Uh, I personally on Periscope has, have built a few hundred followers and I've gotten like probably like 80,000 views. So it does seem to, to, to work depending on your business and other factors, but I'd and try it out. For example, like if you do a big video, like you monetize some money, if like you just spend on the videos. So it is something on Periscope that at the moment, you don't get monetization yet. They haven't quite set that up yet, but on YouTube, you, you can, but not Periscope yet. And then, um, what's the videos? Because it's like uh, you, you, you build your audience. So how, how you can apply that in, in like it to be interesting in your business? We don't have time to talk about Periscope that deeply, but everything that we're talking about in these various networks, we can apply to various degrees to Periscope. I would like to teach a day on Periscope, but we don't have we don't have the day. Let's go over to our um, oh one more thing here. Because I've already got this account set up, this already has some tweets, some things that have been tweeted. If you've got a brand new account, I think it says something like "pick your first tweet," and it gives you a couple of suggestions, or it says "write your first tweet." So the tradition is, if it shows it on the screen, that you can pick the tweet of just setting up my Twitter. The very first tweet 10 years ago was just setting up my Twitter. That was the first tweet. So here it's suggesting to you, perhaps, keep the tradition alive and tweet that as your first tweet. You could, or you might have the empty box uh, where you can write your own tweet. For us, To get followers, complete your profile, tweet three to five times before trying to build followers. If my account is still the egg with a blue background with no biography, I have very little to entice people to follow me. Okay, I filled that part in. But then I don't I haven't said anything. I haven't posted any I haven't tweeted anything to show people what will they gain by following me. The purpose of getting those followers is that they're going to pay attention to you and care about your business and perhaps um, buy what you're selling. So if you haven't actually tweeted anything, you're not giving an indication to people why should we follow you? I'm saying three to five tweets. I'll show you in a moment how or what to tweet, but keep that in mind. If you've got a brand new account and you don't have at least five tweets, you're not showing people what's in it for them. They may not read or notice your biography, but they will look at your profile. When I went off to these other accounts, you're seeing here's an account about, I mean, here's a tweet about this, here's a tweet about that. That's funny, that's interesting, let me follow. Here's a great tip, let me follow. Let me reply, I like cookies too. So if you don't have content, why would people follow? As a beginner, our goal is we need some amount of tweets. I would lean more toward five rather than three. This will give you the practice of using the network. And I'll show you in a moment exactly what to think about tweeting. But that's something to make a note of. So let's have content to entice followers.
we can uh, tweet as many times as we want. This account here has like a thousand tweets. It's not uncommon to, for those that have had it longer to have 10,000 tweets, 100,000 tweets. There's no race. You don't need to have a certain number of tweets. It's more about quality than quantity, except here you do want to have some quantity to show what your account is about. On the top right corner, you will always have the Tweet button. Let me guide you through a tweet. Wherever you're at, you should see the Tweet button at the top right. Click it. You get a screen here. Compose a tweet. I said that a tweet can have text, video, etc. You can delete a tweet. You can publish the tweet and say, never mind. You can delete it. You can't, you cannot, however, at the moment, edit a tweet that's been published. So if you took time to craft an amazing tweet and you published it and then you saw, whoops, I misspelled sale, you can't go back to edit it. You have to delete the tweet and tweet it again properly and pay attention to your spell check. So keeping that in mind, it says what's happening. This is a business. Ultimately, I'm trying to get sales of my baked goods. So I could start right away saying something like, click to buy a cupcake. And then I have a link to my cupcake. victorsbakery.com slash cupcake. That's perfectly fine. Not really. Because I haven't built an audience yet. And I'm going right away into salesmanship mode. I want to build an audience, build followers, build those that care, and then start to sell. I would recommend that don't always think of it in terms of selling, selling, selling. Don't think of every tweet as an ad. Don't t think of every tweet as a way to get sales and phone calls and all of that. You're going to become completely a marketing channel and a, a commercial account and people are not going to want to pay attention. People are going to unfollow or not follow you. So I'm going to say, eighty percent. No, that's a different stat. Um, I'm going to say, uh, vary your tweets between sales and community building. So some tweets simply to share something interesting, something related to your business, but not really hitting them over the head with buy now. Some tweets about buy now, here's a coupon, subscribe to this. And I can give a percentage ratio to get you started, but it's going to depend on your business, your company, your followers. 60% sales versus 40% community building. So if I have a goal of 10 tweets, 6 of them are about selling, 40 or 4 of them are about just community building, something interesting. I'm right away starting with a sales tweet, but I don't have followers. I would say the first three to five, um, think about that, what, what you're doing, sales versus not. First tweet that I might do is something like, we're on Twitter, follow us. That's still one of the sales tweets. I'm trying to get a result or a reaction. I'm trying to go get followers. Okay, what if I instead do? We're on Twitter, follow us for tasty photos, uh, fun recipes, and exclusive coupons. Here, I'm doing a little bit more of that community building rather than the sales. Yes, I want followers. But here I'm saying, here are some of the reasons why you might want to follow us. 
you're going to see photos, you're going to get recipes, you're going to get coupons. This might be a better tweet to start to build followers than simply sales right away or asking for a follow without a reason. For the moment, I'll just tweet a regular text tweet. Notice as I'm writing, there's a counter that's counting down. You have 140 characters. Eventually, when you get past that, you can no longer tweet. I've got a little smiley face here in the corner to add emoji, the newest language on, on online. We're able to communicate with so much with these. These do take up some characters, one at a time, but I'm able to also add some of these emoji. We've got like 200 to choose from. Let's say I'll tweet that on my profile here. Now I've got a tweet. So all my followers would see it. If I just created it, all my zero followers would see it but I'm going to have that goal of five tweets to, to start to build an audience first. After I publish a tweet, I have options on the corner, or I can delete it, but again, we cannot edit our tweets yet. I'm going to tweet another one. Here's a community building one. It's Friday. Time to start baking. Okay, Victor's Bakery. I'm selling baked goods. I want people to come to my website to buy my, buy my baked goods, but I'm not going to be about selling all the time. I'm going to be about the concept of baking all the time and baked goods and cookies and everything all the time, but I'm not going to be about buy, buy, buy all the time. Here, this is something fun, community building, trying to get followers. I can mix it up with some text and a graphic. We've got these GIFs, these animations that we can attach. You click on GIF, we then have a search. We have these concepts. If I want animations about Aw, and agree, and applause. I have all of these built in. Or I can search uh, a topic there. So let's see what's under the OMG. There's all of these. I'll just pick one. So on my tweet, I'm saying this. I'm attaching a graphic that plays this will be part of the tweet. It's for something more interesting than just the text. Of course, also, um, does this fit my audience? Um, the voice of your online presence is something you need to think about as well. Develop a voice for your social media. In my SEO class, my search engine optimization class, I talk about that in more detail in that the voice of McDonald's is different from the voice of In-N-Out. They both sell hamburgers, but their, their text, their graphics, their multimedia is different. Uh, In-N-Out is all about the Southern California style. McDonald's is a little bit more you know, nationwide. So what I'm tweeting, how I'm tweeting, even using, even choosing to use contractions and such, or slang, jargon, or lingo, am I going to do that on my account? Am I going to put an animation? Maybe that animation won't be the best. Maybe I'm a tax preparer, and I'm saying, tax time is coming, make sure you've got your W-2s in order. 
smiling, jumping face. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Maybe that's how my tax business is, maybe not. But it's the, the voice of your business that you'll figure out eventually. So I'm going to tweet that. So all my followers would see that. I can tweet, and I've also got the ability to add a poll. Here's another community building one. Yes? So does the GIF take up character space? It does. Let me confirm how much. We've got 140 characters. I'm going to add a GIF, just whatever. And it went from 140. Oh, I guess not, maybe. But you can only have one at a time. So I can add a GIF animation, and uh, that doesn't take up any characters. Okay. They've been tweaking things that everything used to take up space and now some things don't. Like a poll. Another way to do community building. Here's a poll. I can ask a question. Okay, so Victor's Bakery will ask, what's your favorite type of cookie? And I have here, attach a poll. You can have up to five options, I believe, four options. So I'll say chocolate chip. I'll say Pecan, Raisin Oatmeal, and Snickerdoodle. So I can attach a poll. I can have it active for up to seven days. I'm not, I'm, I sell chocolate chip cookies. I sell Raisin Oatmeal cookies. But I'm not saying click here to buy an oatmeal cookie. Later on, I'll definitely do that. I'm not going to do that every single day, every single time. Here, this is for the purposes of showing people, this is what my account is about. Follow me. You'll have this fun. You'll see coupons. You will see videos. You will see things to follow me because this is the captive audience. So then eventually when I have sale this Saturday, click here. I might get results. I'm going to tweet that. And just for fun, I'd like you guys to fill this in. On your Twitter account, your Twitter address up there, go to twitter.com slash vmcink. You should see this tweet that I just tweeted. Go ahead, go ahead and vote. Go to twitter.com slash vmcink. This is to show my followers would have seen this poll. But anyone still can see it. The tweets are public. Whatever I tweet, by default, will be public. All 330 million people on Twitter could see my tweets. But of course, the ones that are following me are the ones that are definitely more are going to see this tweet. They've chosen to follow. When you, when you tweet, you will see this icon here of adding a poll. It's like three things stacked to each other, I guess. Mm -hmm. So right here, I've got six votes so far, even though there's more than six people in the class. Just a moment. What's that? to respond, said... Well, they click to vote. It, it's a poll, so all you... Yes, it's twitter.com slash vmcink. So uh, you're seeing here, none of you are following this account, but you're still able to vote. If then you follow, that's even better. You don't have to, but if people follow you, that's better for you. That then they become your captive audience. Here's a few more votes. So people are liking the chocolate chip. Raising oatmeal got some love right there. So this is live. People can vote on it. This is, again, the, the community building. It's not always about hire us, buy this, call us now. It's just about fun things. It's, it's annoying that I'm following an account, and all day long they're just tweeting about sales and buying and all of that. Once I follow an account, I'll have the button to unfollow. I don't want to pay attention to that anymore. I'm just getting sold to every single time. 
so I can unfollow. We'll talk about those nuances in a moment too. Yes. So I see that in uh, both communities, based on do people who are following you say they updated? Yeah. Could that be what? No, it's not that it's gonna. It's not that it's gonna pop up and show people. It's just that if they were looking at that particular tweet at that moment, it would be updating at that moment. No. So that's one kind of community building post. Um, the the deeper topic of community building is this here. Is Let's see, community building is basically interactions. Above I said impressions, conversions. Impressions are you all saw the poll. Some of you voted. That was a conversion. Everyone saw my tweet that said sale this Saturday, but few people actually clicked. Few conversions. So I'm always trying to get conversions. Getting a follow is a conversion. It converts a person from not a follower to a follower. I got a conversion out of this poll. I got votes. I got a conversion out of a tweet that said buy now. They clicked. So conversions, interactions, results. Every tweet can have various conversions. We have like, reply, reshare, and then two more I'll mention in a moment. When I tweet, you saw that poll you interacted with it. Other examples of these tweets here. So here's a tweet. Are you ready to start investing? So that's there. And this got a reaction. A heart. A like. On Twitter, you have the ability for people to, uh, to like your tweet. This is one of these conversions, one of these results. Next to it, you then got a reply. So I tweeted this, someone clicks reply, and they're basically answering. They're writing something. You know, I click on that, and then they're saying, thank you for this article. It was very helpful. I learned a lot. That was a, a reply. That's a next level up here. I put these in a specific order. So like is a quick approval. A reply. Someone comments. We share. Someone passes along your content. You have that on Facebook. You have that on Twitter, Google+, Periscope. All of the networks have these basic interactions. If you're on Facebook and you shared a picture at the minimum, someone may click the, the like, the thumbs up, which now is a thumbs up or a little smiley face or a little angry face. You have a, a reaction. There's also then someone, you shared your picture and someone liked it so much they replied. And they said, that was really funny. Thank you for sharing or something. Then the next level up is someone saw your, your picture on Facebook and then they shared it to their friends. So your picture reached more people, friends of friends. Twitter has that too. Let's say I have five followers, and one of those followers does a reshare. In Twitter, actually calls it a retweet, but it's this icon here. Someone liked this tweet so much that they retweeted it, they reshared it to more of their friends and followers. And I, ha I have five followers, but what if one of those followers had 5,000 followers? That person then retweeted my tweet, and they reached their 5,000 followers, plus my five, I reached 5,500. I've reached friends of friends with a retweet. Someone passes along your content. 
that's one way of saying going viral. That's what that means. I tweeted something, it went viral, it, it's, it went to this person, they retweeted it, it went to that person, this person, that person. Traffic, visibility, conversion, sales, links on your website. I put like here as the first one, as the lowest level, as the as the minimal value. Not that it's bad. Of course getting a like on your content is good, it's just that it's not as good as a reply. A reply means someone took a little bit more effort to reply. They may be more of a serious customer. We'll see why that matters soon. The next level up is a reshare, because you never know. You might have a follower that's got 10,000 followers, and then your content reaches 10,005 people. That's a higher level. Next higher level, follow. People like your content so much, they pay attention. They become a captive audience. That's a much more valuable thing than a like. I'm getting 10 likes every day. Great, but how many follows am I getting? Because the follows are the more serious people, even a little bit more serious, that they do care about your, uh, your business or your products and such. And then on Twitter, then we have one more highest level, which applies to all of the networks. Again, why are we even bothering with social network in total? sales <coughs> or whatever your goal is donation sales more fame for your art uh, downloads of your music for free whatever your goal is the ultimate goal coming back around easier said than done. It's very easy to click like. It's still easy to click reply. It's easy to click follow. Suddenly it's much harder to click buy or subscribe or download our demo track. So that's why we're building as many followers as possible. We still have plenty to talk about regarding building followers. We're scratching the surface. At least what I talk about today will still also apply on Google Plus and Facebook and Pinterest to various degrees. And if I don't finish covering everything I wanted today, when we talk about uh, Pinterest, whatever we learn there, we can come back and apply it back on Twitter. They all, it all <coughs> overlaps to various degrees. So the latest votes show that uh, chocolate chip wins. Mine is Snickerdoodle. I can't vote on my own poll. Okay. So uh, let's take one more quick break, and then uh, we'll talk about more strategies to get followers. It's just about 12. We'll take a break until 12.10, and then we'll, we'll go on. Just one quick question. How many of you see the results of your poll?